and welcome to lecture number four. We're going to discuss hatch patterns, uh, regions, and so on. Uh, very similar to CAD, so for my CAD users out there, uh, you guys must be pretty happy about this one. Here's a little bit more of a familiar territory for you. I'm just going to, once again, typical uh, home tab, wall, and just create my four walls. And uh, let's talk a little bit more about hatching. Uh, in CAD, ha hatching is a little bit more complicated because you actually need to have um, a series of lines that create this, this kind of enclosed area in order to hatch. Here, it, it's a little bit easier. And uh, we're going to cover really two aspects of, uh, of this hatching. You can hatch with a specific pattern or you can hatch actually um, what they call an invisible hatch which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later so let's start with our uh, regions first and uh, just our regular hatch uh, the hatch is once again under the annotate tool tab here and you have region as you can see okay if you hit the little drop down list, you have two of them. You have a region, which is actually the 2D hatch. It's a graphic hatch area. Or you have a masking region, which we're going to talk about momentarily uh, following the regular region. Uh, masking region allows you to basically blank out areas so you can draw in with uh, 2D lines. So I'm going to go in with region, for example. And you know you can do it just like we've been doing everything else. You can actually draw it in with uh, regular lines and hit finish region and automatically you get a hatch pattern out of it not too bad I'm gonna undo that real quick I'm gonna undo again and undo okay so once again under the annotate tab you go region okay and this is a regular region here and with any lines you want this time I'm gonna go in with a funky shape if you want now you do still need to make sure that it is a closed area and you hit finish region. So this is just a net pattern that Revit creates for you. But you can go ahead and change that. Uh, if you select it, you can do a, a couple things. Here's a drop down list and it has some just out of the box stuff available. You have ortho cross hatch, you have a solid black, vertical lines, wood patterns, diagonals. Some of these are pretty good. And I think for the purpose of the class, we really shouldn't be going too crazy. Uh, but we'll we'll get a little bit more into uh, some customization, but some of these are okay But let's say some of them it just doesn't fit what you want. Well, you can go into element properties once again and Go edit type You see where it says fill pattern Diagonal cross hatch you can click on that and here's all the different uh, hatch patterns available Okay, that weren't listed originally before so how did I get there? Okay, just in case, let me back up. If I select this object, basically my hatch area or hatch boundary, I can go to Element Properties. Okay, and I can go Edit Type. Under Fill Pattern, I hit a little three dots, a button with the three dots here. And it takes me to this guy here. Okay, so let's say I want this pattern. Hit OK, hit OK, and hit OK. And voila. We've just changed some hatch pattern. Now, if you notice, you have a, a visible boundary here, an outline. I'm not too crazy about it, to be honest with you. And what if I don't want that to show up? I only want just a hatch pattern. So what I'll do is I can select it, and I want to go Edit Boundary. Okay. Under Edit Boundary, you can do a couple things. You can obviously modify your hatch boundary area very similar we've been doing already with slabs and walls and everything else but in conjunction you can also highlight all of these guys as you can see all the lines there and you see where it says line style thin lines there's an option here that says invisible lines this is pretty neat here we go invisible lines hit finish region voila not a bad deal so you'll still be able to see a guideline just for yourself, but it will not print out. But if you just kind of hit escape or you know click away, as you can see, now you have a nice hatch pattern area with no outline. Great deal. Um, this is really helpful. 
Um, let's say if I want to cut a section through this area, I'm going to go ahead under the view tab, section, click, and say click. And let's go ahead and go to that section. And, you know, at this point, I want to define like an earth hatch pattern area. So I'm going to just do a quick little under foundation, wall foundation. Okay. And let's say now I want to create like an earth hatch pattern there. So I'm going to go into annotate region. And let me go ahead and just start the... Uh, create whatever pattern I want, whatever shape I want. Okay. All I'm doing is just creating an area where I want to fill in to hatch. When I'm done, I hit finish region. It's not really what I want. I can select element properties, edit type. I don't want wood. What I want is see we have an earth. I believe we do have an earth. There we go. There's your earth hatch. Hit OK, hit OK, and hit OK. And there's my earth hatch. Okay. That's uh, that's pretty much it as far as uh, regular hatch, uh, region hatch. And uh, the last one I want to talk about is masking. So if I go region, masking region. Here I can actually go in and, for example, I want to block this area out and do something else to it. Hit Finish. As you can see, it masks it out. It's still there. In the model, it's still there. But only in this view, what it does, it masks it out. Now, the only part that doesn't make sense is the fact that I don't want to see this outline. I want it to be completely invisible. So I can basically highlight it. And I can say Edit Boundary. right? Select my outline. Click here. And say Invisible Line. Finish region, and you're basically done. And it's still there. Once again, you can highlight it. It's, it's, you know, there's a wall, and there's a piece there. But for the purpose of this function, that's how it works. And then you can go with the detail lines, and you can start drawing whatever funky shape it actually starts. A little funky architecture there. So, and then we can also select the lines. Go in and say wide lines. So at the end, it looks like all one piece. Okay. So that's basically all found of the annotate region. You have your masking region, you have your regular regions, define your hatch patterns. Now, one thing I did not mention is if you have multiple hatch patterns, for example, you have earth and then you may have solid, so on and so forth, you have to make sure, just like you've done with any other family in Revit, you have to duplicate it and, and give it a unique name. So, for example, if I go region, and I'm just going to just do a quick little something there, hit finish. As you can see, it defaulted to what this guy here already is. I don't want that. I want this to be maybe like a solid black or something. So what I need to do is I need to select the item, go to element properties, edit type, right? And at this stage, what do we do? What we've always done is we go duplicate, and I'll call it solid hatch. Hit OK. OK, and then for fill pattern, I should have a solid here. There you go. Hit OK, hit OK, hit OK. Voila. And right now we have two unique solid patterns, or rather uh, region patterns. And one solid and one earth. Okay, thank you very much. And this is the end of uh, this lecture.